Hi everyone, I'm Miss McCausland and in this session we're going to work on our mark making and texture techniques using the artist Paul Clay as our inspiration. We're going to work our way up from looking at different hand grips with our pencil to creating a page full of different visual effects. All resources are on my website heathermccausland.com. So you will need a pencil, a sharpener, a rubber, white A4 paper and I'm also going to be using a blending stump today but you could also use a cotton bud or a rolled up piece of paper and that's fine. If you have your sketchbook with you that's great please use that as well um, but if you don't don't worry use a sheet of white A4 paper. I've created videos so that you can draw with me and work alongside watching the way I compose the page, hold my pencil as an extension of my body and complete the challenge. It's important to set out your A4 page like I do as you go along so that you don't end up squashing your drawing into a corner. Make sure it's no smaller than mine on the A4 page. Also, rewind and pause as often as you need as I'll be giving you lots of tips on how to do this challenge. On an A4 sheet, we're going to start by drawing a big continuous line around our page. We're going to be inspired by a quote that always makes me smile. A line is a dot that went for a walk. The artist Paul Clay said this, and I know my mathematician friend would say that this is wrong and the definition of a line is a straight one dimensional figure having no thickness and extending infinitely in both directions with no wiggles anywhere along its length. Our line today is going to be extra wiggly as it's inspired by Paul Clay's quote. Texture is the way something feels, whether it's furry, spiky, rough, smooth like this slate here, wet or shiny and smooth like this glass here or rougher like this rust. But I want to talk about it in the context of Paul Clay, as he's often been a big inspiration to me and my art students. He uses playful lines and created artworks that spark my imagination. Here is one of his continuous line drawings that he did in charcoal, where he didn't lift his charcoal from the page. I'm sure most of you have been looking at it whilst I've been talking, trying to work out what it is, sparking your imaginations too. He was a Swiss abstract artist who had a dry humour and often a childlike perspective when painting. His personal moods and beliefs and love of music were big influences on his art. He taught at the Bauhaus too, alongside his friend Kandinsky, another important artist. This is just a small glimpse, but please do look him up as he's a big influential artist who has a lot of art artworks that will interest you, I'm sure. The artwork that I will focus on today is called Insula Dulcemara, and it was made in 1938. Insula means island, so the English translation is Dulcemara Island. It's such a warm, cheerful oil painting that was painted in a time of Paul Clay's life when he was suffering from an awful wasting disease. When I look at it, my imagination goes wild from the bold lines I can see animals, I can see symbols, I can see shapes, and maybe a boat in the background. It's generally felt that these symbols arranged on this background represent a desert island, complete with an idol and passing steamship in the background. It's masterful the way Paul Clay manages to portray this with what initially looks like simple lines. So, on to step one. So for step one, we're going to be completing a single page together. And we're now going to take our dot for a walk round the page, just like Paul Clay would. At the end, we'll see if we can see any animals, symbols or people in our lines. But for now, freely draw, leaving a lot of nice big spaces for us to draw our textures in afterwards.
Make sure that line is nice and light and you don't lift your pencil off the page as you just let your hand freely move across this page. Paul Clay would sometimes do this to music as well and see how music inspired those lines. Remember, leave lots of big, nice spaces on that page. Do some straighter lines, do some lots of wiggly lines to create those boxes that we're going to be working in. And stop when you feel that you've reached a point. Now I'm going to go all the way back to that starting line. But you don't have to. There we go. Step number two is to practice our tone. I want you to practice your darkest dark that you can get with a HB pencil and your lightest light tone as well. So varying the, the, uh, the pressure for this one to get it darker and lighter. So choose a space in which you'd like to do that. I'm going to go for my darkest in this one. I'm going to use the side of my pencil to start with to get it nice and smooth. Trying to keep it as accurately in between those lines as possible. And then I'm going to overlap over the top to get it as dark as I possibly can. And then in a space nearby, I'm going to use this one here, this little tiny one. I'm going to use the side of my pencil and the lightest pressure I can do. So light that you can barely see it just to practice and warm up my wrist and my hand and my motor memory skills to show that I can do that really light tone. Once you've done that light one, I want you to find a narrow thin section on this page in which you can do a gradual tone, going from dark to light, trying to make sure that it, it gradiates gradually from dark to light with no, no lines, no, no blocks. So I'm going to start from the dark, work my way down. I remember we can go over it again, working from dark all the way to that lightest. And again, this is just a warm up because next after this, we're going to be starting to work with our mark making techniques and textures. And I want us to be doing something called textural tone. And that's where we merge our skills of dark to light tone with our texture techniques too. My extra points for you if you manage to not go over that line like I just did there. So I'm going over again a couple of times in that shape to go from dark to light. There's no need for anything other than a HB pencil on here today, but you might feel inspired and choose something else to work with as well. That's absolutely fine. Um, but I wouldn't go beyond, say, colouring pencils. If you really want to do a few of these with colouring, that would be fine as we go through today. Just make sure it's always sharp, whatever it is you use. I'll complete mine all in black and white though today. So that was our quick warm up for our textural tone technique. Textural tone, like I said before, is where we blend our textures with that gradual tone to create realistic 3D textures that we feel we can reach and touch. To do that though, to create realistic textual tone, we need to vary the following things. The first one is overlapping, and that's what I just explained there, where we overlap repeatedly to get it darker. The second one is varying the pressure. We press harder to get it darker and lighter to get it lighter. Spacing, I'll talk about that one a little bit more when I go through some of these, but we need to change how much we space out. The further spaced out, the lighter it is, the closer we do things, the darker it is. And finally, the size, as you can see on this one, the larger I draw the shapes, the lighter it looks. And the more tightly packed, smaller they are, the darker it is. So I think it's worth bearing that in mind throughout this activity. So I'm going to go around here. I'm going to write them in just to remind me, just writing them anywhere I like. And those will always remind me, those are the things I'm changing as I'm working today. So I'm not writing them in boxes, I'm writing them around the side. Overlap, size, pressure and spacing. And it means that I will always remember those are the things that I'm varying to be able to do this task. The 
The next step is to start adding some mark making techniques to our page. But first, we need to go around the garden and collect some primary source objects, or if you can't do that, some secondary source photos. So go around your garden at home, or whilst out on a walk, collect objects that have beautiful textures, or take photos and get them ready to use. If you can't do this yourself, I've collected a range of reference photos, which I'll show you in a little while, for you to use. So I'm only going to do a few practice mark making textures because I want to then move on to the realistic textures. But again, this is almost a warm up in which my motor skills will improve. So I'm going to choose again, I'm going to choose small ones. I'm going to choose these two to start with. I'm going to start with a simple line and I'm going to go all in the same direction. Like so, I'm going to space them out and go lighter the further away they are. And I'm going to press harder and overlap and put them close together at the top, like so. And that's my first one done. The next one I'm going to put in here, and I'm going to do the same, but this time I'm going to do a cross hatch. And that's where I go the opposite direction as well. Now, often people forget about the second type of cross hatch, which is where we do lots of little cross hatches like this one here. So I'm going to do that one somewhere else as well. I'm going to do that one up here. And what we do is it's like a little knots and crosses. And again, going lighter on the side that I want it to be lighter and bigger. And then press harder, draw it smaller and put them closer together. Overlapping them like so to get it darker. Now you'll notice this one starts to look a bit like a hessian bag, like a, a rough textured bag maybe, the more you do this. So that's, that's showing how mark making links into these realistic textures that we're going to be adding. So have a go at that one too. And then I'm going to do one of my favourites, which is the squiggly one. It's the scribbling one. And I'm going to do that in this big one here. So I'm going to start off. I want it dark here and light here. So I'm going to start scribbling. I'll do it slowly so you can see how I do it. So I scribble like so, just going back and forth, going even smaller and tighter down there. I've used all the pen, the point of the pencil for all of these so far. Overlapping like so. I've just uh, been distracted by the blackbird going over my bridge in my garden, taking food to its to its little babies up in uh, the tree over there. It's got a nice big worm for them. So I'm going lighter, pressing lighter and spacing out those wiggles as I go further down. Again, top points to you if you manage to keep it inside those lines there. Next, I'm going to do that one where it was really neat with the lines, but instead I'm going to be doing it in a more scribbly fashion. I'm just going to do it in this one here. So I'm going to see how I am with doing it really quickly and a bit more scribbly, because that'll help me with textures later, varying the angle a bit as well there. And I can see already how different that is to that one there. And finally, the last texture I think I'm going to do at the moment is some circles. Now, it's not a pattern. We don't want it to be perfect circles. What we want to do, if I choose this one here, is just start to... There's somewhere between circles and spirals, really. And getting smaller. I could do it smaller on that side, really squashing those together. and getting more spaced out. Now, because that blackbird's distracted me, I've just realised that this bit's too dark. So remember, you can always lift, lift that graphite off like so and rework over the top like that. I'm going to do it again even, I'm not happy with that still. There we go. So big circles 
and then smaller circles, pressing harder and overlapping at the end there. And you should get that dark to light again.